All right, I'm going to do a quick video today. Uh, lots of assets to cover. I'm going to try and get through it quite quickly. Start with the markets. Markets were essentially unchanged. You know, S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, totally unchanged by, on average, there was some slightly bullish looking candles. The Dow Jones, maybe the most, you know, look at this sort of I don't know, triple, quadruple top. If you really zoom in, you've got this high, which is why I've got the horizontal line. So it's looking like, and also a closer high day. Maybe some follow through. I don't agree with it fundamentally, but it is what it is. So quite a decent close, despite not the strongest move up. NASDAQ, you know, technically a red day, but essentially unchanged. Looks like it wants to test a recent high, especially when you've got the Dow closing the way it did. S&P, very similar to the NASDAQ and the Dow, actually. It's sort of like an average between the two. Looks like it wants to test its recent high of, let's say, 411 point, or let's say 412, or test of 412. Definitely possible tomorrow. Uh, so, yeah, between those three, really unchanged, but slightly positive. The Russell was up 1%, also closed a high of day, but it's been so destroyed because it's really been, I would say, following the bank stocks more than anything else, that despite this decent move, nothing crazy, just 1%, it's still doesn't look bullish, you know, just one or two red days and it's just immediately looking like a new all-time lows are possible. So, you know, the S&P, the NASDAQ and the Dow really have to keep going and break their next high for the Russell to maybe even test its old high here of, let's say, 180. So Russell, very weak still, got lots of catching up to do. And, you know, despite the overall slightly up day on average of the markets, the VIX was green. Now, you know, gave back a lot, closed at low day, lots of resistance around 20. Again, I totally disagree. You know, it really is as if the banking crisis never happened, let alone that it's over. I, I think it's not over at all. I think it's coming back any day now. A bank will just make the headlines and we're straight away going to flush, you know, led by the Russell. The banking stocks start with the XLF, the stronger ones. You know, it's a bit like the Russell. So close to high of day obviously been destroyed recently so even another move high you're going to find resistance around 32 let's say 40 on the xlf the kbe you've got this descending line i would say you know resistance at 37 for the kbe and even weaker is the kre today already resistance didn't close a high of day like the others so again, the descending line is what it needs to break out of and close. Remember, it's all about the close. If we have just one or two weak days, we're straight away making new all-time lows. And this, again, it's still for me the KRE that will ultimately be like throwing an anchor to these boys, the senior markets. You know, if the KRE starts to make new lows, closing low 41s, especially below 41. I don't care what's going on in, in a particular stock, you know, Amazon earnings, whatever, like you guys have to go down. And who knows, you know, sometimes charts have a way of predicting news. So imagine the chart starts to go lower and all of a sudden the next day you've got Deutsche Bank with, with I don't know, uh, a new report out that they're heavily screwed with derivatives. It wouldn't even surprise me too much. So Anyway, I think the point is the markets were essentially unchanged, slightly up. You know, the, the S&P, the Nasdaq, the Dow, slightly bullish just because of the technical charts, the, the candlestick close, a high of day. Russell, even though it outdid the others, still weak. VIX being green is notable stuff, but VIX is destroyed. But again, the banking stocks correlation and the fact that they can just throw everything down under the bus is is also still noteworthy and actually is still my opinion. So I'm bearish on the markets despite the very ultra short-term bullish technical signals. Okay, with that said, let's check out the rates. Now rates, you know, ever since this total U-turn upside down uh, pattern, it's starting to be a bit clearer now. You know, I said it would take a couple of days and we needed the chart to, to draw itself out. The one year you can see resistance here, let's call it 4.78-ish. So we've got this uh, resistance here. And again, rates going up equals markets up. Now, rates were hardly up today, but I still think that is the case. This week, by the way, we have quite a lot of news. 
So I don't think tomorrow we have any US news. I think we've got some Chinese news, European uh, news. But otherwise, Wednesday, we've got some CPI. I've forgotten exactly the calendar. It's just go to FX Street Economic Calendar if you want a, a weekly you know, list of, of everything and how significant it is. But yeah, there's lots of news. But otherwise, I would just say, look, rates, you know, the one year resistance 4.78, we've got this ascending support. The one year is a bit special, but otherwise the two year, we have descending resistance here. Support, I would say generally, let's say around here actually, just 3.65-ish, low 3.6s. But yeah, I would expect some resistance once you start to hit four point, I don't know, just under 4.10 on the two year. Five year, same thing, we've got some support here. Let's call it 3.3-ish, just underneath 3.3. But re uh, resistance on this descending. So let's say if it, if it was to try and go up tomorrow, 3.6 should be resistance. 10-year, very, very similar support, very strong support around 3.25, let's say. Uh, and also resistance on this descending, let's call it 3.5. 30 year, slightly different, but again, still got the descending, you know, let's say 3.7 ish on the upside resistance. And the ascending, well, it should be the old, the, the most recent low, let's call it 3.5 ish. It doesn't really matter. I think we won't be going down too much tomorrow, but actually, you know what? I'm going to draw this one anyway, just to be extra detailed about it. It might make the chart look a bit noisy, but. You know what, I'm going to delete the ascending because if we go back down again, we've instantly lost the ascending anyway. So I may just make a, sorry, excuse me whilst I redraw this, just to be very, very precise because the 30 year is quite relevant, I think. Let's just do this. Expect lots of support, you know. If we lose this, there could be a fake flush and then it comes back up with a hammer. So I'd say 3.5 slash 3.53 this entire zone should be support if we lose it then 3.4 but i don't think that'll be too relevant tomorrow i don't expect this to go down but who knows okay so rates you know i would say quite a lot of resistance we're close to resistance not only on the long-term ones but even on the short-term ones we've got quite a lot of resistance coming up but you know if they get to close above we can go a bit higher we still have to see how um, <clears throat> how interest rates react because who knows the Fed could still raise another twenty five basis points. Um, so gotta take that into account. But again, for me, it's either the Fed raising rates officially or markets going down, led by the banks, and then we have to judge how how bonds react to that. And by the way, it's always worth looking at the TLT. I think this is a nice, you know, the TLT is a twenty plus year Treasury bond but here we're looking at the bond itself rather than the yield so if you see bonds breaking out if we see a close above let's say 110 definitely nice cyclical number so a 110 close on the tlt you should start to see yields just go lower so as bonds go up yields across the board you know go lower and then you could start to see the 10-year close below this all important ascending line you know where two <clears throat> two support zones correlate um intertwine whatever so yeah very important to keep an eye on the yields and the rates uh let's look at the dollar dxy intraday it hit resistance here on this descending and was looking lower and then i believe we reversed let's check the 15 minute well that's a bit of a weird candle but ignore that one but the point is it's all about the close let's go back to the daily we have closed above this descending and one of my subscribers actually mentioned, you know, if we, well, the, the DXY looks like it could run to 103, 104, 105 even, I think was mentioned. And I actually, for some reason, I didn't even consider it. But um, yeah, then I thought, yeah, that's that's definitely likely. And, and we've done that today. Now, obviously, we have NFP on Friday, although markets were half closed. So I did expect a little extra reaction because at that time, you know, here's that Friday. We didn't really make the most amazing close on the DXY, despite NFP being essentially bullish for gold, uh, for dollar. But today we have some follow through, follow through with a bit more volume. 
so this is a bit more credible and basically now the technicals look a bit better for a small bounce i mean look we've come all the way back down from 105.5 straight through okay a bit of back and forward some filling but i think we can expect at least a test of 103.5 ish at least then maybe we fail and come back down again if you know what i mean let me just draw it you know then well, that's that will happen there, but you know what I mean. Just go up there, come back down again, and then who knows? Then maybe we fail, go back down again, or do we just hold and then go higher? Let's see. But I think the point is we can at least expect this. And I don't know if there's some news, right? CPI, whatever it might be, you could have a bit of follow through. And if you do, then you might as well expect it to spread if we go to the second level 105. But the point is, we did close above this descending. So statistically should be more likely that there's a bit more follow through to the upside and obviously commodities especially gold and silver should suffer from that a little bit you know this is ultra short term stuff but yeah dollar i think could go a little higher let's say we're on a 3.5 i'm not going to bother going through all the um oh wow go on very quickly yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, if the dollar keeps going up, then you can expect the flush of this 108 on the euro. I think we failed, you know, a bit of a rounding top here on the euro. USD, Japanese yen, yeah, look at that. Close a higher day above the last time it tested here. So maybe a little test of 136, 137. That's definitely possible. And the pound, despite a nice close above this, will come back down again. Actually, I don't expect too much weakness here. Um, but you know, if the dollar goes up, it should go back down again a bit. Anyway, point is DXY, nice close there. Let's look at commodities. Start with copper. Yeah, you know, still hasn't closed above this descending. I expect it to happen, but hey, dollar was up. So just, I don't think anyone should be rushing this trade. If you're in it, then feel, feel secure that it will go back up. If you're not in it, I don't think you need to rush to get in it. I do think eventually it will close above this ascending. It hasn't happened yet, though. So wait for the chart confirmation, or maybe just gamble and buy early in anticipation that it will happen. I don't know what your strategy is. I'm not in copper. I'm not even in copper mines. It's just, uh, you know, Dr. Copper, a nice barometer for the markets, and generally should follow gold and silver. So, But still, no close above the descending. Natural gas. This one just surprises me. I mean... Yes, we bounced off this support zone, so kind of what you expect, but I actually thought it would have done it already. So I got a little hesitant here when it was taking its time. And the next day, it just had this big, what I would consider an engulfing bearish candle. Okay, we didn't close below the support zone, but we still ventured lower than we ever did. And lo and behold, today we just had this massive candle. I don't know if there's any news. I don't really care about news. But this is more engulfing than, than anything else before. So now you would have to switch bullish, which I hate to do after just being bearish at the lows here. But I don't care about how I feel. I mean, I, I trade the strategy. For me, I mean, I'm in natural gas. I did two buys, one around here. Let's call it 2.7. I bought another ETF, NGAS. And then one down here. So I would say I'm roughly, honestly, roughly about 2.5. To me, it's the same as where we are. If we zoom out, who cares where I am? You know, if I'm in around there, then it's the same as being in where we are now, or even being in at three. It's the same thing. I do expect us now, after seeing this candle and after the double fake out, to to start to go back up, which means I don't get to buy all the way down. You know, below two. I did have two more buys that I was going to allow myself, maybe even three. But maybe I'm just going to have to stick with what I've got. And who knows, you know, just because you bought here already, if you start to go up, you can buy higher than your last buy. You know, don't all of a sudden have this psychological block. If you think, if you're really, really adamant that it's going to go higher, like I am, I can even buy a breakout. No problem. I can buy higher than my last two buys. No problem. Because if it goes up, it was a good buy. But for now, I'll let it prove itself and maybe we'll have a little retracement if we do go up to three and then I'll sort of buy the cup and handle breakout. We'll see. But today, very impressive. Uh, a bit surprising. Again, didn't expect it, but, you know, I'm in it, so I'm happy for that. Oil just consolidating a bit of a lower close in the last couple of candles. But for me, 
any drop should be bought because this is some serious supply demand geopolitical bullish candle you know opec and non-opec uh, countries basically coordinated a um a cut in supply so i think any drop should be bought it can drop but i don't expect it to last so i think ultimately we're going to the 90s period so uh, i'm in my little oil stock pei or is it prosper energy uh, so you know i'm i'm long oil and it is reacting to to this to to oil in general so <clears throat> i have skin in the game here uranium you know i really want it to flush and actually uh the other day yesterday i just i located a bunch of uranium stocks i'm going to start covering uranium stocks so if you guys know more than me or if you know a couple of uranium stocks just list them i'll i'll cover them too i'm not going to cover the stocks today I'm not even going to cover gold and silver stocks today. I'm just doing the general sector coverage. But just to let you know now, if, if you're up for it, but I'm going to start covering. I've got about 10, 10 to 15 uranium stocks. I think they're pretty good, pretty mainstream, some juniors, some seniors. So let me know. But I think uranium could get very interesting, especially if we have a flush. I mean, I'm going to buy. Uh, I'm not an expert in uranium stocks, but I know how to read charts, I think. And... I think I've located some stocks that cover the URA and the, what is it, URNM, Uranium Stock ETF. So if they follow the charts and I can read charts, then I can trade them. So I'm not going to be buying and selling some very new stocks where there's no history of data. There's no chart to go by, but the ones I located have decent data. But anyway, Uranium, uh, you know, we had a nice survival bounce here but we've come down a lot very quickly so now we're stabilizing it should move a little higher but i think it's decision time soon you know like if you start going back up to 20 what do you do do you close above 20 you're going to take out your old high of 20.35 and run to the next descending because if you don't um you're going to go back down and you're going to look very very weak you know testing three or four times this low i'm sorry but it's more likely to flush and maybe that's what's needed, and maybe it'll be a fake flush. You know, maybe you've got like this hammer flush, and then it closes within the ascending or just below, and like it screws up technical traders like me. I always take that into account. So, you know, I like to buy flushes sometimes if I'm bullish long term because I don't care if it goes lower as long as you have multiple entries. So maybe I'll account for that, and if we do flush, I'll I'll start buying probably a senior stock because they're always you know less likely to have this disgusting flush something like ccj uh cameco i think it's called that's one of the ones that i'm looking at uh for a fake flush first entry buy anyway otherwise uranium looking weak but you know let's see what it does on what i expect to be a bounce tomorrow okay gold and silver yeah i'm gonna start using this type of trend line actually i was just playing around you can ignore that one for now that's one that might come into account if we really start to flush today we went down and i noticed that we bounced completely off this trend line that i drawn one or two days ago so you can see what it is it's the descending here we broke out of it and sometimes you retest that's why i had it and i said look the low of that breakout is also there so there should be support. And to be honest, the fact that it found support off this descending, retest of the descending, makes sense. And just underneath it, you have the low of day of that candle. So I thought there would be strong support around there. And that's what happened. So and I think that's what gold needed. You know, I mean, it would have been good to just base above 2000, but to have a, a mini flush and then a curl. And what I think might happen is a curl and it moves back up. And then you start to make higher moves, higher highs, and you start trading above 2,000 for several days. That will be very bullish. Where we are now is very bullish, you know, just below 2,000. It's 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 bullish, you know, it's still bullish. And look, it went down with the dollar going up. The dollar could move up a little more, but I don't see it making a crazy move. So gold just hovering, you know, high 1900s. It's it's still bullish, you know, so yeah, let's see. And also silver, and I mentioned this, I mentioned how silver is going to continue 
outperforming gold on the way up. And I said, it's possible even on the way down. You could have days where gold is down and silver is down less. And today was one of those days already. You know, silver is just hanging around doing these nice hammers constantly. Just basing here around 25 and still above this, this horizontal line. And I thought silver would also like gold come down and back test this descending. And if it does, it's still bullish. You know, you could end up doing it after several days and testing 24, you know, and then it will look bearish to some people, but it won't. It's just a decent, healthy, typical back test and then sort of curl and go back up and, and run to 26, 27, 28. And then you're really, really bullish. But the fact that it's hovering here already is even more bullish. So on the way up, it's stronger than gold. And on the way down, it's stronger than gold. That's that's impressive. That's bullish. So, you know, that's what makes me extra certain that this retest here is still very bullish. The fact that silver's holding off even better. So gold and silver, healthy retrace. Maybe an opportunity for some people to add back to miners or to, you know, to add before the train really leaves the station. I think we're, we're still pretty, pretty bullish here. And again, this is on a dollar update and a markets generally update. And gold and silver are still acting inversely to markets. You know, I'm watching on the one minute. I see the market go up. One minute, five minute, ten minute, whatever. The market generally is going up. Gold's going down. And not much. Market takes a little leg lower. Gold is up. Just like the miners still following the metal. So, yeah, the miners down a little bit today. But still, you know. Nothing crazy, nothing crazy. Down 1% on average, if I can say that. Look at this closing near high of day. Just hovering a bit like silver. Just hovering near its highs. GDX. You know, not much to say. I mean, if we start to flush and go lower, close below 33, then maybe I, I think a big, you know, even if we come back down to 30 on GDX, or let's say 31, 31 on GDX, I think is more more likely 30 is possible but anyway no let's say 31 on gdx no problem you're just going to make a higher low and then go back up this could be the same as silver testing that 24 zone right back test 24 and bounce you could have this sort of quick flush on the gdx and gdxj like gdxj might come back down to 38 let's say now how much of a drop would that be from where we are five six percent yeah that would be a bad day for the miners but I would add that. I would add to that. I think I've seen enough. Yeah, I've seen enough. I'm pretty adamant that gold, silver are just going to hold their highs and run. Gold, 2000. I mean, yeah, things can change, you know. Maybe you have this banking crisis. This is the one thing I was thinking about. You have a banking crisis where everything gets sold. You know, baby out with the bathwater. People need liquidity. They're selling the best stuff. Gold down. $75, silver just down 4%, one of those days, and then you think, mm, okay, gold is no longer doing that inverse to markets trade, and markets look like they're going to crash for real, so therefore gold and silver can crash for real, and GDX, GXJ could have like two or three minus 8% days consecutively. That is a possibility, and that would make me change my mind, but otherwise, if we keep trading the same general pattern, I don't see why... The miners aren't just going to go up medium to long term. So I would buy that kind of a drop. So yeah, just to finish off, GDX, GDXJ, you know, holding, hovering sideways to down just at their highs. Let's say GDXJ around 40 to 41, more like 41 actually. Just trading sideways there. That's bullish. Even if it went to 40, that's no problem. GDX. Just trading around, let's say, 33 above 33. But look at that, it's kind of 34. Still bullish. So despite red days, still bullish. And gold and silver, not down much at all, despite the dollar breakout. So, you know, I welcome this very light retracement. I'm going to finish with Bitcoin. I wouldn't normally, but, you know, you can't ignore this. Look at this. So two days. I mean, obviously, it trades during the, the weekends. That Sunday night was quite decent for a Sunday. But look at this. This Monday was was impressive at the close, above 29,000. Obviously, we ventured there already, you know. But um, this close was quite decent. It was better than that Thursday. I think tomorrow we have a chance to, to visit 30,000. If you do, if you close above 30,000, 
whether it's tomorrow or the next day, you've kind of got, you know, I know you have a lot of experts, uh, experts, you know, people saying Bitcoin is going to go back down again. And it's true if the Nasdaq flushes and if you have a banking crisis. But is Bitcoin really going down with the banks? Not really. You know, it's kind of a, an outlier. It's kind of like gold. It's an alternative to banks. So I'm not sure that Bitcoin will go down if the banking crisis unfolds. And I think that will happen, by the way. Banking crisis will resume. So maybe that's what it needs to really, you know, officially secure itself as, as out, you know, no longer in a bear market. So, but we've rallied sort of 100%. We've gone from essentially low 15,000s to almost 30,000. That's almost 100%. So I actually added to my hive. I would never normally do this, but I added to hive mining just before the close at 348, which is the highest buy. That's, you know, normally I would always buy low and low, low. This is me buying higher than I've ever bought. I might as well bring up high very quickly. I'm just going to finish on this. Where is it? Uh, it should be here. Yeah. You know, here, just because Bitcoin's all the way there, high, I think it's underperforming, but I look at the miners, like this is high, you know. Okay, Bitcoin's at 30,000. It's got to do 100%, just a bit more to get to its old high of 70,000, let's say. Whereas high mining, 100% is done real quick in one month if there's really a breakout so i like the leverage in the miners just like in gold and silver and if i look at the other ones you know look at this high of day close quadruple top ready to break out and these ones do mara riots already done it look at that best close in a long time looking like this one wants to run to 20 that's a 100 percent move so if there's any sort of a move in bitcoin I think the miners are ready for like multiple double digit percentage moves. So I should have maybe bought right on Mara or spread it out. I just, I don't know, I'm just very used to Hive. I've traded a lot for over a lot of years, made very good money, like the CEOs. But, you know, sometimes it's better to trade what you know rather than, well, I shouldn't say that. It's also good to spread your risk a bit. But anyway, that's what I did. I just bought a bit of Hive because I noticed the, the Bitcoin chart. If it comes back down again, that's fine. Um, that's fine. I just thought I was underweight a bit, so there you go. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Thanks for that. Let me know what you think, and let's see what happens tomorrow.